Hello everyone and welcome. Uh, this video will be very roughly made because I won't have any time to edit it. Um, but I wanted to say a few things and make this first video absolutely today because Apple Music, as you probably already know, have just announced that they will support Dolby Atmos and that's great news uh, for all of us um, immersive audio and Dolby Atmos enthusiasts. So there will be plenty of other videos to come. Also, the works in my studio is now finished and everything is almost ready. I've started doing a few songs in Dolby Atmos. It's trickier than uh, one might think, but we'll have plenty of time also to talk about that. I also wanted to thank everyone who sent me messages uh, asking for what we want more content. So it's finally coming. Uh, so I wanted to start this uh, series of video by explaining why I have chosen such and such hardware equipment because that will allow us to answer the big question which is do you really need all that to mix in Dolby Atmos? So first of all the speakers. It so happens that I used to work in 5.1 so I only needed to add two speakers to my setup which is uh, made of uh, Focal Solo 6BE uh, so I have now have seven of them I will just uh, I had told you it would be roughly made uh, so basically that's uh, the the setup uh, now with the the three front speakers and also uh, well each uh, the the rear speakers and surround speakers are all uh, focal that's one thing the big question was elevation speakers and uh, of course ideally in an ideal world uh, I would have used the same Solo 6BE for um, the ceiling but um, well first of all to be honest that was expensive oh by the way uh, um, I wish to say that I'm not paid by uh, anyone and I'm not endorsed by any brand uh, to, uh, to, to say that it's just the equipment that I have chosen but I have no benefit nor advantage whatsoever uh, for mentioning them in the video I wanted to make that clear uh, so um, having because Dolby specification has it that um, all speakers should be able to reproduce frequencies as low as 40 Hertz uh, so the Solo 6, like those ones, are okay. Uh, so in an ideal world, I would have put the same speakers at the ceiling. But unfortunately, first of all, that I couldn't afford it. That was too expensive. Second, uh, the Solo 6 don't have any onboard system for wall mounting or whatever. So it would have been very complicated. They're heavy uh, and that would have been difficult. So I finally chose another French brand. Uh, which is Ellipson for the ceiling speakers and they are doing those marvelous Planet M speakers. They don't go as low as 40 Hertz because they, they, they can reproduce as low as 47 Hertz but I've checked with people at Dolby and they say it's okay because as you know our brain anyway cannot really perceive the direction a low frequency sound is coming from. Uh, because of the wavelength which is long so uh, that was not a problem so I do have the four speakers here and they're amplified with a four channel amplifier I will try and show that I think maybe this way is easier yes uh, which is the HPA on top here uh, I've chosen um, I hesitated between this one. Oh, there's one speaker which is not calibrated correctly by the way uh, and um, have hesitated um, with Yamaha amplifiers but actually this one uh, I've chosen this one because it's one unit high and it's smaller uh, the basically that's it the, the power is, is is sufficient and finally I did have in the past I had um, a subwoofer uh, the, the, the focal subwoofer uh, but it proved to be not sufficient for the, the room and so this is uh, the Mackie TRS 150 that I had kept from a previous life uh, in the previous studio that I had in the 5.1 setup with Mackie at the time uh, and so uh, it, it really it does the job I mean it, it 
compared to Dolby specifications, it's it's not green, it's not red either, it's orange. I, I will make a video uh, explaining the, the, all the Dolby specification and the way to measure it and uh, to try it. So that's for the speakers and speakers need of course uh, monitor controlling and um, room optimization and for this there's only one brand in the world and that's uh, another French company it's not my fault uh, <laughs> it's another French company uh, called Trinov and they're, they're doing the MC Pro that you've seen in the same rack than the the speakers amplifier and uh, this is the remote control uh, for the MC Pro, uh, which is, you know, you, may, you most likely already have seen uh, this microphone here, which is very, quite famous and very specific. This is the measurement microphone from Trinov. And so the, the, the MC Pro sends a signal in each and every speaker and then measures it and does what it does to correct uh, timing issues and phase issues and many, many things. So basically, uh, the room was fine already, but well, it needed some fine tuning. And this piece of equipment is, to my knowledge, really the, the almost the only one thing uh, that can do that rather automatically and properly. And one final word on the audio interface, which happens to be uh, this beast here, which is uh, Merging Technologies Horus. Uh, in this configuration, I put 16 analog inputs and outputs. Some are on the front and some others on the back. Um, and that I wish just wish to say this is Merging Technologies converters don't have uh, the quarter of the fame that they deserve because that that's just so amazing as converters so uh, I wanted to say a word about them as well uh, and now the big question is do you really need all that to mix in Dolby Atmos the good news is no you don't uh, you can start mixing simply with headphones and the Dolby Atmos software that we saw on the screen before. Uh, you can start a mix with that, but there's always a but. At some point you will need to have your mix checked either by because you can yourself access to a room such as this one with plenty of speakers, even maybe more than those, uh, because in a movie theater it can go up to 64. Uh, so, um, and you can access that to see if your mix translates correctly, or you can send it to, well, someone like me, not necessarily me, but someone like me with a, this kind of equipment to make sure that your mix, without um, modifying it too much, but just fine tuning it, to make sure that it translates uh, the way you, you want it to be. And well, that's uh, about it. But the one thing, the what good news is that we can start working with headphones. And anyway, we'll have to check the mix in headphones. And there are plenty of little tricks about that and fine tuning of the Dolby Atmos software. And we will have time and I have plenty of ideas for videos to come. So please subscribe if you want to uh, be notified and click the bell if you want to be notified of future videos. That's it for this one. Uh, thanks again for all the support that you've shown for the past month. And uh, thank you for watching and see you soon. Bye.